homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today I want to talk about uh, a buzzword that's thumped around like all kinds of homesteaders, uh, especially on YouTube. People think that, uh, well, the two terms that they bandy around a lot are sustainability and self-sufficiency. Now, just to get things totally clear, self-sufficiency is an American myth. It doesn't exist. It's never existed since the beginning of human species. Let me say that again. Self-sufficiency has never existed since the beginning of human species. We've always depended on one another. Some folks say, well, what about Kit Carson and uh, all the mountain men that were out in the Rockies? And... No. No, they weren't self-sustainable. They weren't self-sufficient. They relied on the work of others to make themselves able to live a rural, solitary lifestyle. But they were not self-sufficient. They didn't make the steel that went in their gun. They didn't mine the lead that went in their bullets. They didn't make the powder that made their shot. They didn't make the steel that made their traps. They didn't make their traps. You see where I'm going. Sustainability is something that we can move close to, but sustainability is not a 100% thing either. All right, we can move closer to sustainability, but we can't be 100% sustainable. There's going to be times that you're going to get sick. Me this year, that's a good example. You're going to get sick and you're going to have to depend on somebody else. It's just the way it is, but sustainability goes back to being able to raise your own seed and save your own seed from year to year. Now, there are certain seeds that lend themselves to that and certain seeds that take two years to do it. Let's take an example. Uh, behind me is what used to be the fall garden. Now, what I've got back here is turnips. Now, I planted turnips last fall and in order to get seed back, you leave them in the ground over winter. Turnips, kale, carrots, okay? That's the way I get carrot seeds, it's the way I get kale seeds, it's the way I get turnip seeds, okay? Usually beets, we ate all of the beets last year, I'll have to buy beet seeds. There's that sustainability thing again, just slaps you right in the head. Anyway, uh, I've put these turnips out here last year This is what you're looking for. Okay, this is a turnip pod. Now, I've already harvested my turnip seeds. Uh, I harvested them about four days ago. The reason being, if you don't get at it when these are ready, right when they're ready, the birds get at it. And they'll make sure they get all of them. They're greedy little things. They don't care if you are as sustainable as not as long as they are. Now, when the turnips are ready, these, hold that up there, those, it has a hard time folks, and these little pods, which are like little bean pods, they get totally dry, and when they're ready, you put them in a, you put these in a paper bag, and when they're ready, you can just shake that paper bag, and they just come apart like that, and there, are those uh, mature turnip seeds. Okay? Now, let's go over and look at the kale and the carrots, and we'll talk about them too. Okay, here's our kale patch. Now, this kale is just now starting to get ready. Most of it is still green. These are almost ready. Okay? Uh, they're not ready because they won't pop open easily. 
okay they need to dry a little more in the field now when they get fairly dry I'll take and just shave these off a bunch of them a bunch of them and uh, this little handful right here will yield somewhere in the neighborhood there's something like 10 seeds in each one of these pods so this little handful right here is going to be almost a hundred seeds right there okay I've got 10 or 12 pods there it's gonna be almost a hundred seeds all of them won't be viable now what will happen is when you put these in a paper bag and you shake them some of them will open but only the ones that the seeds are totally mature will open the others will just stay in their pod which that's okay with me that just means the seeds that I plant are ready to be planted now I've got quite a bit let's have a look you can see there's quite a bit of a seed there now let's look at the other things I have seed of <clears throat> right here No, that's not one. Yeah, it is. This is a carrot seed. Now, this head is not ready yet. Oh, yeah, okay. This head's not ready yet. Of course, all these little flowers, every one of those little flowers is going to become seed. And what will happen is these will have been visited by the bees, and then they will get like this, but they'll shrivel up and be like a little just a little ball and when they dry in the field I bring them in put them in a paper bag the same way as I do the kale and the turnips and they will uh, make carrot seeds now this one head will give me a couple of hundred carrot seeds let's walk on down through here a little bit <coughs> now right down through here is where most of my carrots are okay now these were all planted in the fall and I harvested a bunch of them but they're just now out here where they're going to start putting on seed you know they're bloomed out good and uh, believe it or not not all of the pollinators of carrots are bees look here at these beetles okay those old boys are walking all over that they're eating stuff but at the same time they're pollinating those carrot seeds so not everything in the garden that seems like a bad guy come on focus oh well not ever not every guy in a garden that seems like a bad guy is a bad guy now there's some other there's plenty of weeds out here too uh, normally normally uh, I let this part go until they go to seed and then this is where I plant uh, my beans and that kind of thing okay so that's the kind of seeds we save uh, I'm sustainable on turnips I'm sustainable on kale I'm sustainable on carrots uh, I save the seeds from year to year. Uh, what I haven't been successful at being sustainable on, uh, I was sustainable on potatoes, but I got sick and couldn't do the potatoes. I had a problem with them last year and lost my seed. So, potatoes, apparently I'm not sustainable enough. Uh, I'm sustainable on tomatoes, on peppers, on... Uh, four or five different varieties of beans uh, I'm sustainable I want to be sustainable on rutabagas I don't I haven't been successful at growing rutabagas yet a rutabaga is a yellow turnip I haven't been successful at growing those yet uh, I am not sustainable on sweet corn I like the super sweet corns the the candy corn uh, the G90 uh, that kind of thing now when I was a kid we grew something called golden cross bantam and you could save your own seed to that i'm thinking about getting some seed back but it wasn't nearly as sweet as this uh, candy corn 
that I grow now. So I don't know if I'm going to go that route or not. I, I like the candy corn. Uh, I would like to be sustainable in a SHTF. I don't know uh, how sustainable you can be on everything. Uh, I'm sustainable on sweet potatoes. Uh, trying to think of the other things. Sunflowers. Uh, what do I buy seed of? I buy seed for corn. Uh, I bought seed for I bought seed for just about everything before. Uh, pumpkins. I'm sustainable on pumpkins. Uh, I've got a pumpkin I've been growing for years from seed over and over and over. Uh, I don't even know what the variety is, but it's an awesome little pumpkin. So you can move close to sustainability. But I use fertilizer. I use gasoline and diesel. Okay? If you're an off-gridder and you think you're self-sustainable and you use gasoline and diesel, you're not. Just saying, you know, you think you're self-sufficient, I should say. You're not. Uh, I'm not. I use electricity. I'm uploading these videos somewhere. Okay? Don't be fooled. Self-sufficiency is a myth. It's always been a myth, and it will continue to be a myth. This pull yourself by your up by your own bootstrap stuff is bull crap. The truth is, we survive on the sweat of other people's brows. We didn't make the steel, we didn't build the car, we didn't make the camera, we didn't make the electricity, we didn't make the batteries, we didn't make the solar panels. Over and over and over and over, we benefit from the sweat of somebody else's brow. That makes you not self-sufficient. Okay, now if you like this stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading, prepping, self-sustainability and self-sufficiency stuff every week, sometimes once, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, It'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.